If you want to do your academic writing in plain text using Markdown, you need to have a basic grasp of what a bib file is. And so that's what I'm going to cover in this video. Let me fade in. Hi, everyone. So here's what we're going to look at in this video. First, I'm going to give you a definition of bib file and then talk a little bit about its origins. Then I will give you an example of a bib file so you can have a grasp of how they work internally. Then we'll talk about why all of this is important for Markdown. And then finally, I'm going to end with some additional resources that you can use to get started uh, putting together your own bib file. So with all that in mind, let me fade out and let's get started. So let's begin with a quick definition. A bib file is a plain text document that contains the metadata for the sources you cite in your academic writing. And remember that when I say plain text document, I mean a document that includes letters, characters, and numbers, but no formatting. So you get A through Z, 1 through 0, but you can't do things like bold and italics. And then when it comes to metadata, I'm referring to the characteristics of a given, uh, any source, any, any, any document. So for example, if we're talking about a book, it would be the author, the title, the year of publication, those sorts of details. So that's metadata. Bib files were originally designed to work with a program called LaTeX. And you don't need to know a lot about LaTeX for the purposes of this video or for writing in plain text and using Markdown, but I just want to touch on it briefly here. So LaTeX is a program, and it's actually somewhere between, like halfway between a word processor and a, a more complex programming language. And it's used a lot in math, in the sciences, and also in the social sciences. You can think of it in the following way. If HTML is the language with which you build complex and beautiful websites, LaTeX is the programming language you use to design beautiful and complicated PDFs for academic publishing. And because LaTeX has been used traditionally for academic publishing, programmers of LaTeX have also needed a way to organize and automate their citations. And so what they have done is they use a program called BibTeX. And BibTeX is simply a program that works with LaTeX to generate citations. And so when we talk about a bib file, we're actually talking about a file that's originally designed to work with BibTeX. But again, this is just to give you a basic idea of where bib files come from. You don't need to know all the ins and outs of this to work in Markdown. Maybe this would all be easier if we had a more concrete example. So let me give you an example of how a bib file might work. So here we have a cover of a book, and I have to say, just as an aside, this is an excellent book. I urge you to go out and buy, you know, 500, 600 copies. And if I go to the title page of this book, you can see there's a lot of metadata associated with the source. You can see there's the title and subtitle, the name of the author, the publishing house, and the place of publication. Now, if I were to take all that information and put it in a bib file, it would look like this. So there are a few things I want to point out here. First, you can see that the entry begins with an at sign and then book. So this identifies this source as a book, as a monograph. The next important thing is what's called the site key. And the site key is a unique identifier for this particular item. More on that later. You can see that this site key is a combination of the author's last name, an underscore, the first word of the title, another underscore, and then the year of publication. After the site key, you can see we have an entry for each important piece of metadata about this source, location, title, etc. And then the metadata specific to this source is included in curly brackets for each of those items. So that's what a bib file would look like if you were to open it up. So what's the importance of bib files for Markdown? Well, first of all, site keys and remember, site keys are the unique identifiers for each uh, item. They allow Pandoc, and Pandoc is the program that converts your plain text documents into Word, into PDF, into HTML, etc. They allow Pandoc to generate your in-text citations and list of references automatically. What that means is you have the simplicity and the formatting advantages of plain text, and at the same time, you have the citation management advantages that we associate with rich text editors, you know, LibreOffice, Microsoft Word, Scrivener, all of those. So you really get the best of both worlds. Let's do a live example to give you an idea of what I mean. If you look here, you can see on the left, I have a plain text document open. It's the black screen. And then on the right, I have a live rich text preview of that document. 
you can see that there are two sections, introduction and references, and then there's some placeholder text in the middle. Well, watch what happens when I add the site key for a source. You can see it generates the in-text citation and the full reference. And then I can even add the page here, and it will have everything set up perfectly, just the way you need it if you're doing Chicago author date. And of course, you can set it for other formats if you want, MLA, APA, etc. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so now that we've talked about BIM files, let me just suggest some additional resources if you want to get started on setting up your own BIM file and organizing your academic sources. There are three tools that I would recommend. The first is the sort of oldest kid on the block. It's called Jabref, and it works with PC or Mac. And again, it organizes your sources, your PDFs, and keeps everything in a single bib file or in multiple bib files if you want. Another Mac only option is called Bibdesk. And the one that I recommend most, and this shouldn't surprise anyone who's seen my other videos, is Zotero. Now I should mention that Zotero doesn't automatically generate a bib file for your library. And that's why in a future video, I'll be showing you how you can create and sync a bib file with your Zotero library. And that's it for bib files. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos and feel free to leave your comments and questions below. If you have ideas for future videos, I'd love to hear them. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at, at DrNerdis and check out the other videos here. There's a lot on plain text and Zotero and all sorts of other topics related to academic writing.